Yeah, so good evening and welcome to the Whalen Library to our April Great Presenters Program. Tonight we are so excited to have Yamini Ranjan and Karen Blumenfeld here to talk to us about Whalen's new, new Human Rights Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee which was established in March of 2021 by the Select Board. Yamini is the chair of the HRDEIC. She is a podcast host and passionate about storytelling. She produces and hosts a podcast that brings out stories of remarkable women from this community, the women of Wayland. Yamini has degrees in engineering and business and has lived on three continents. She practices design thinking, loves sound mixing and editing, and relishes designing graphics. Karen is the vice chair of the HRDEIC. She embraces connection, collaboration, learning and action around human rights and equity. She's a leadership team member and workshop co-facilitator for white people challenging racism and co-chairs her faith community's anti-racism group. She has a master's degree in business and social work and has worked in the public, private and nonprofit sectors. Thank you so much to Yamini and Karen for being here tonight. Just two housekeeping notes. First, we are recording this session for broadcast on Wacam, our local cable access channel. Our Zoom is actually live streaming to Wacam right now. Um, and for the library's YouTube page, so you'll be able to rewatch and share with your friends. And if you're joining us via Zoom and you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat and I will raise my hand for you and read it aloud. And now I'll get out of the way. It's your turn. <laughs> Thank you so much, Courtney. I wasn't expecting being introduced, <laughs> and now I feel better. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, tonight, we have uh, a quorum, which means we will be doing a public meeting on behalf of HRDIC. Uh, this happens when more than four, four or more people are together for a meeting, and we are actually having a quorum here. So I will lead it as a public meeting and begin with our date today, Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. Um, time of meeting 7.35. Location is Valen Free Public Library. And this is being recorded, like Agni said. And I would begin with um, our indigenous land acknowledgement. Today, as we begin, we would like to acknowledge the following indigenous people on whose traditional homelands we live, work, and gather today the Massachusetts, the Nipmunk, the Wampanoag, and the Pawtucket. We acknowledge their ancestors, particularly Kato of the Massachusetts tribe, who was steward of much of the land now, encompassing Sudbury and Wayland when European settlers arrived to colonize this place in 1638. We seek to understand, acknowledge, and remember the painful ongoing history of war, genocide, and forced removal of indigenous peoples Offer, uh, and we offer a living celebration of the indigenous communities who are not just part of the past, but who continue to live and make new history here today. May we all commit to deepening our relationship with indigenous communities and to being their allies in working for justice. I'll do, I'll do a roll call. Sorry, these are all uh, protocols. Um, we have members here, and if we have members on Zoom, if you raise your hand on your Zoom line, I would consider that to be your presence. Um, mailing, I was about to say Steve. Mailing um, and Jessica, Karen, Yamini here, and we have we might have someone on the Zoom. Is is there anyone from our? Heather, <laughs> yes, all right. all right, thank you. So we open our meeting to a public comment. If you all have anything to ask, say, comment about the session today or, but we will have a question and answer in the end. Q&A will be there um, towards the end of our presentation. But if you have any public comment, um, we can take it now. With the preferred limitation of one minute per comment, and please. And later there'll be more. Later there's plenty of time for Q and A. Okay. Are there any questions on the? Okay. 
comments. That's a good Oh, hey, we have to advance our slides. Not responding. All right, so we will be moving on to our next and actually first slide. Um, I wanted all of you to know that HRDIC is a group of people who come from distinct and diverse background. And the great part of our committee is that every member is connected with their own group in, that, in our town and beyond. That helps our work even more. Uh, I'm the chair, Yamini Ranjan chair. Karen uh, is our vice chair. Jessica is present in the meeting today. She's our clerk. Mailing is also present in the meeting today. Jano, Heather, Heather is present. Yavu, Chloe, Carlin, Yunji, Kanmani, and John Bagmi is our ex officio assistant town manager. So, a very brief history. How did the HRDIC come to be? So in 2020, following the murder of George Floyd, the select board um, issued a statement on racism. And you can find it on the select board's page of the town website. And a, a very brief quote from their statement is, we as community leaders recognize the devastating harm caused by racism and commit to work toward eradicating it in our town. A year later, the school committee made a public statement which you can find on the school committee's website, saying, be it resolved that Wayland will hold ourselves and our community accountable to putting words into action and ensuring that diversity, equity, and inclusion are embedded in our institutions and practiced by and for our students, families, and staff. So these were beautiful words and, and beautiful sentiments. And sometimes, what we aspire to doesn't always happen that way on the ground in, in, in real life. And so there a project was done called the Wayland Lived Experiences Project, which you can find the results of on the HRDEI website. And what it found was that there are gaps between the intent and the, and the wishes and the hopes and dreams of the community and, and what people's actual experiences are at times in the town of Wayland. So a group of um, residents came together and formed a, a voluntary group of about 10 or 12 people that, that we called ourselves the Human Rights uh, Commission Study Group. And we assembled ourselves to look at, could there be a place for a Human Rights Commission or committee for the town of Wayland? And if so, what might that look like? And we did some research and found out there were some 60 plus human rights commissions at the town or municipal level across the state. And they have different names that might be called a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee or a human rights committee or commission, but more than 60 across the state. And we said, well, OK, so what might this look like for the town of Wayland? Who would be on it? Who would this group report to? Um, should it be independent, or should it be part of the town government? And so we spent about a year of meeting weekly to address these questions. And toward the end of that year, the town administrator um, at the time f decided to form an advisory group on race. And the work of that group ran in parallel to the work of this study group. And also, there was overlap between the two groups. And in the end, what happened was the town administrator made a proposal to that select board to form this group that, that was coined the Human Rights, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. And the select board was happy to approve that decision. And, and the group was formed. The HRDEIC was formed in March 2021. March 2021, which means we've already crossed March. And it's the second year. We are celebrating two years. And we have a lot to celebrate. We'll get into the details of what all we have done. but. Um, Let's talk about our purpose. We have a really nicely written purpose with a lot of points, but I wanted to make it short and only capture the essence of it here. To affirm that the town is an inclusive community that has as one of its 
core values the freedom from discrimination, disrespect, bigotry, and other forms of microaggressions, macroaggressions, hatred, and oppression. Underlying all of this is the human rights principle that every person has equal value and dignity. Let's talk about structure. So we are, what are, who are, who are we, what we are. We are a town committee. We report to select board. We were made by the select board. We are built on collaboration with different town entities, town boards, meetings that we do with other HRCs of other towns. And we are composed of nine voting members and up to seven associate members. Currently, we have six voting members and five associate members, so we actually have vacancy, and we are inviting all of you to come up and you know join our committee if you're interested. We meet every third Tuesday at 6 p.m., and uh, the meetings are open to public and recorded. We follow open meeting law, which means we do not deliberate outside the public meeting. And if we ever discuss projects or work, it cannot be more than three people. Uh, we have our own written group norms, which means we follow certain group uh, pointers where we use them to follow our discussions efficiently and respectfully. We strive for consensus. Um, you may have seen that associate, there was, um, in the composition I told, there is a voting member and associate member. Initially, when we were formed, uh, we were we had people uh, with non-voting member label, and we did not really like it uh, because, as human rights, we believe in equality and we take everybody's um, vote and their opinions and views. So we recently had a change um, in the name, and now they're called associate members. Most of them are youth members from the school too, and it's a great way of engaging kids here. You know how the generation millennials, Gen Z, everyone is contributing to the social uh, norm, right? Uh, difficult topics and conversations are part of the work. I think it's it constitute 99% of our work. Everything is difficult, no. Is, is everything very sensitive, no. But as you know, we have been focusing on sensitive and critical issues uh, lately. And there will be something that I would announce towards the end of the presentation, which will bring, tell you the fun part that we bring to the community. Our work since 2021, we are so proud of the work that we started. Because in our own uh, minds, we were laying the foundational work for people to come in the coming years. We started with making policy and program recommendations, uh, spreading awareness. We will go into details in the next slides, but I'm just letting you know the pointers. You can read it on the slide. But I wanted to tell you how proud we are with the grant support, collaborating with other uh, human rights entities uh, from other towns, and educating the community through webinars and Zoom meetings and other stuff. I'll give it to Karen. So just um, speaking to each of those bullets that was on the last slide, in our first two years, we made a series of policy and program recommendations to the select board, uh, all of which can be found on the HRDEIC webpage, so we're not going to go into the details here, but we made recommendations about s the schools, uh, about policing, um, Actually, two. we had two letters related to the schools and the situations going on in the schools, and one letter related to policing that um, endorsed the work of the Wayland um, Policing Working Group that we're, we were really pleased to be able to endorse that work. Uh, we recommended that the town conduct an equity assessment to see how are we doing as a town in terms of, of meeting our own standards of, how, of what kind of a town of equity and belonging we want to be. And the select board, to its credit, authorized $100,000 for an equity assessment for the town of Wayland. And we are really, really pleased about that. Um, we have recommended that the town uh, designate a DEI, a diversity, equity, and inclusion position. That has not happened yet, but it could be one of the outcomes, potentially, of the equity assessment. The schools have a, a DEI position, but they on, that person only works with the schools, and so our recommendation is that there be one for the whole town as well. 
Um, the select board asked us to propose a holiday display policy so that when holiday displays are put up around town that they include everyone and, and don't harm anyone through exclusion. And we also, we, we put together a holiday display policy with some questions that we thought ought to be asked when determining whether to put up a holiday display. And that's also on the website. We recommended that Columbus Day be replaced with Indigenous Peoples Day, which the schools and the library have already done, and that's under consideration now uh, by the select board. And we recommended diversifying boards and committees in town, and, th and that's happening bit by bit. Um, and as Yamini said, you know, people on this committee are parts of other, rep other communities in town and are reaching out to their friends and neighbors and, and inviting folks to participate on town boards and committees. So um, w we have been spreading awareness over the past two years since we've been in business. One of the first things we did was create a community resource guide, which you can find on our website, um, that provides resources on a whole range of topics. I, if you're interested, I have the, the, the table of contents here uh, on the table. But um, you know what to do in cases of of domestic violence, what to do in cases of you know um, needing s needing mental health services, a whole range of things can be found in that community resource guide. You would even find the Facebook. You would even find the Facebook groups of my you know the minorities in in town. All right, so this is where I have a very big smile. Uh, because the person who designed our signage is present in the meeting today. I would, I would like to tell you that this was our vision. We think that when we have signs and posters and signages in the town, we feel belonged. And which is why our first year we were able to get um, um, grant money. Uh, I would talk about that later. but we were able to design this Pride Month uh, signage and we posted it in the June on, on two places in town, very prominent places, and it was designed by our previous member, Stephen. He's present in the, and he's, he's awesome with the graphics, like I said, I love graphics. My introduction by Courtney was, yeah, she loves graphics, yeah, I do, I do. Um, so here is another good news, <coughs> when we started, we're trying to find our footing and are trying to s understand our scope of work. But as we were growing and as we were understanding our work, we realized we needed money, we needed funds. And it was initially we were not supported and we are still not supported by the town. So we decided to um, get some help from outside and this is the result. Uh, we are very grateful to Lauren Dunn Astley Memorial Fund this was the first year, and we won $1,000 grant because of which the posters were designed. Um, a huge shout out to Wayland Culture Council and um, MA Culture Council to award $3,500. Uh, $3, um, this will be used in the multicultural festival that I will tell you the details about in the end. Thank you so, so much. All right. So we also collaborate, as, as Yamini mentioned, with other communities, human rights organizations. There's a group called the Mass Massachusetts Human, uh, what's it called, Massachusetts Human Rights, um, M-A-H-R-C, Human Rights Coalition, Co Co Coalition thank you. Um, and um, one of the members of our committee attends their monthly meetings, and that has just been an incredibly rich source of information for us about all kinds of things that we have been able to bring back to the town, and there's just a lot of, of uh, cross-fertilization there, which has been fantastic. This is mine or yours? Yes. <laughs> okay. So in the past two years, we really offered quite a large number of educational programs for the community, ranging from domestic violence to implicit bias, to Chinese contributions to the fabric of America, to voting and how easy is it to vote in Massachusetts. And what was amazing about these programs besides that they offered a community service was the number of collaborators that we had to, that, we, that, that joined us in offering these programs and we joined them as well. 
So these are the list of collaborators, and I'm not going to read out every one of them, but I can tell you that we are very grateful again, um, and happy that we were supported so early on um, since we came into being. Um, one of you know, I just want to take a couple of names uh, here: Mass Culture Council, London. We did. Uh, we are on to the next slide where. We talk about, um, you see, Valen Children and Parents Association, Valen Chinese American Association, Valen Community for Social Justice Policing Working Group. There are a lot of collaborators here who are also not known to a lot of people in the town. It's very, very important that they are highlighted. And how are they highlighted? They're highlighted by the events that we uh, co-sponsor and endorse. Um, and your group, if you're running a group and which, is, which has a, an overlap with our work, uh, you're most welcome to reach out um, via email. And, and, before we, and before we get to this next one, just to back up, the, f the first one on the list that we had, first on the collaborators, is yes. Wayland Free Public Library. And we want to give a shout out to Courtney and the library for, for this program tonight and all the other ones that we have co-sponsored together. Um, so now in the works, we want to talk about what's ahead, very briefly. Uh, we are working on establishing a community reporting line, which is part of our charter, and would be a portal for people to express concerns and complaints of, or of mistreatment or discrimination um, that might occur in Wayland. Um, and so that's something we've been working on for a while and are really excited to begin the launch soon. The town equity assessment uh, we'll be working on in the coming year. As we mentioned, uh, we are co-sponsoring a community conversation on race amity with the Race Amity Committee of Wayland. Uh, the land acknowledgement that Yamini read aloud, we asked uh, permission to read it aloud at the annual town meeting, and we got permission to do that toward the end of the meeting, which, which we will do, along with providing some educational materials to folks in town about why why do we do this? Why is this important? What does it mean? And what else can we do to advocate for justice for indigenous people? Um, the SPIRIT program is uh, the next bullet, which is a program that is offered to communities for free by the Department of Justice Community Relations Service. And it's a program that the Department of Justice offers to communities in need of healing communities that have had ruptures in the fabric of the community, as we have had in the past six months or so. Uh, and so we will be working with DOJ to bring that program to Wayland um, some very, soon. very soon, very soon. And the last one is very new. Uh, there's an organization called Stopping Stones, uh, which is an organization that works with communities to identify and pay homage to people who were enslaved in our towns. There were enslaved people in Wayland and Concord and Natick and Sudbury, uh, and we don't really know too much about them, and so this would be an opportunity for us to learn more and, and find a way to acknowledge the people who lived here. All right, so the fun part. <laughs> we, are s we are organizing Community Multicultural Festival. This is happening on May 21st, Sunday, where? Wayland High School uh, Field House. And it's going to be fun for the whole family, people from all arenas, groups, and community can come together. There will be performances, food, music, arts and craft activities. Now, we uh, are very thankful again to all the co-sponsors. Um, you can see them on the slide here, right here, but I'll just name some. Arts Valen, Chinese American Association of Valen, Energize Valen, Greater Boston Chinese Culture Association, Valen Race Amity Day Committee, Western Valen Interfaith Action Group, Valen Interfaith Leaders Association, and more. There's a huge list. But I hope this is our first initiative. We thought that anything that cheers our uh, community, brings them together, is also one of the ways we can bring more harmony, more inclusivity. And mu a multicultural festival will, is something that uh, you know, we all thought will be a great idea. So this is happening. Please block your calendar. Do not miss. And for more information, you can find us online. If you go to the town website, www.wayland.ma.us, and go under committees and boards, and you will find the Human Rights, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. This is our website. And there are links to everything we've spoken about today uh, right here, so you can learn in more depth about some of these things that, that we're working on. 
Now uh, we are done with our presentation, but we have some questions that we would ask uh, your input from, and you can add your own. Uh, what issues are more important to you? Uh, what's the most com important conversation we are not yet having? What are the gifts and assets in Valen that you feel could be better connected with this work? What can you do to advocate for equity, inclusion, and belonging? So I'm handing over. The floor is yours. You can ask questions, and uh, we are here. And we will be answering questions as a committee. So whoever is here, and if uh, that's their work expertise, uh, I would hand over this mic to them. All right. Do we, how should we handle questions? Do you want us to repeat them? OK, so if you ask a question, we'll repeat it. And if you have questions on Zoom, let us know, because we can't. Yeah. Ah, OK, OK. Can I go up? OK, that's just one. And also, uh, people on Zoom, you can type in your question in the chat box, and we can take it up from there. All right. What action is the board planning regarding racism facing our school employees? Just for clarification, Caroline Hahn is PT as diversity person. Part-time. Part-time as diversity person proving teacher training. Uh, <laughs> so I think the question is, if it's directed to us, we, we report to the select board, not to the school committee. So we don't have any authority over the schools at all. Um, our, we have made recommendations in the letter that I referenced earlier that's on our website about questions we think the schools ought to be asking themselves about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Um, and we hope that the SPIRIT program, the Department of Justice SPIRIT program that we bring to town will really help with that, the kind of healing that needs to happen. The equity audit, it hasn't been decided yet whether the equity audit will cover the schools or won't cover the schools. They're, they're we're still under the processes. We're trying to figure that out. But if it does, that will certainly um, uh, affect the schools if, if it does include the schools. Yes. Um, I'll take another one. I just announced the multi Multicultural Festival is on May 21st. Uh, and the timings are uh, 1 to 5. So, yes, uh, that I would remember. Is there any thought to changing the name and logo of Valen Warriors football okay. team? We're not aware. That, that's Well, that's part of the whole. That So let me just say that there is an in Massachusetts, there is an indigenous, a Massachusetts indigenous legislative agenda that has five bills that has, they've been, the, the indigenous community and its allies have been trying to get these bills passed for I don't know how many years, somebody here might know better than me. And it's on, it's again in front of the legislature. And so the best way to get the logo of the Wayland Warriors football team changed is to support this five bill package so that the right. whole state will stop using those names for their sports teams. Um, so, so that's certainly something you can do is let your state senator and representative know that you support the Massachusetts indigenous agenda. And I think we have this as a future work on logo of our town too. And the town logo as well. And yeah. it's part of the indigenous agenda and would include logos for towns as well, yes. When will the equity assessment take place, and what are you hoping to learn from it? Second part of question only now. I don't know what that means. Um, but the equity assessment, we don't know yet exactly when it's going to start. The thought is that we will, that the town will hire a thought partner to help scope out the request for proposals so that we don't just put a request for proposals out not quite knowing what we want, but instead to really give it the, the the, the rich and deep thought that it needs. And so that will be the next step, I believe, is to hire a, a thought partner to help scope out the request for proposals. And in the uh, next question where uh, she's asking about what are you hoping to learn from it, actually this is where we are educating ourselves as a committee. We This is a big initiative that will be taken from our end, so we want to be very prepared. Um, so. We are in the learning stage, and as, as we go, we will be very transparent about anything that is happening in the processes. You 
you want me to take that one? Yeah. So how would you help community groups and boards avoid meeting on religious holidays, I think is what that means. Um, there was a school committee meeting scheduled for tomorrow night, which, which I believe has been changed. Um, and tomorrow night happens to be Passover. And so some people felt that this was inappropriate. And I, you know, I think all boards and committees should try to avoid scheduling meetings on on religious holidays and sometimes people make mistakes and and they then they address it so it's certainly something to try to avoid but I don't think anyone does that purposefully yes Courtney <laughs> Okay, so we're going to repeat it for people on Zoom. Um, what, from what we've learned from what other towns are doing, is there anything awesome that we want to emulate, and is there anything horrible that we want to <laughs> avoid? Um, well, um, uh, you know, because I'm on social media most of my time, that's my work. I'm a podcast producer, host, and creator, and radio correspondent too. But I was n watching a lot of uh, these community building exercises that were happening in other towns. And I thought that that was uh, an awesome way of bringing our community together. Because most of the times our awareness about other groups are very bare minimum. They do not know what practices, what festivals we celebrate, and they have and people have lived here for 40, 50, you know, how many years, Lan? You'll be surprised. Yavu has lived here, our committee member, who is also the chair or uh, member of uh, uh, Uvalian Chinese Association. He has lived here for 50 years. So there's so much more. And that's why our uh, Chinese New, New Year thing came up. And there was a student who uh, worked really hard uh, along with other students. Uh, and Yunji is now a part of our HRDIC. Uh, committee. So, um, and, and I personally feel like focusing on the positives. So, we picked up on multicultural festival, we picked up on webinars and talks about domestic violence. There was a round table that we led by, and our member mailing was right there uh, facilitating that meeting. So, we've been watching others because we are new and uh, also trying to do something on our own, be innovative as well. That's our goal right now. Because I think in two years of our being, we have um, clearly done good, you know, good work, um, despite being in the background. We were not very highlighted uh, before uh, to, you know, the first year. But I think the second year has really got everybody knowing HRDEIC. We have also had our first um, Facebook group. Uh, I know a lot of people do not agree with being on the social media, but uh, an essential part of communication with the town is that we open up places where they can understand and know what is happening with our work or other boards and committees' work. So that's, uh, that's also something that we learned. Is there any question, any other question you have? Hi, um, Kim Winter, and I know many of you because I was on the original um, study group for the Human Rights, um, what was going to be the Human Rights Commission is now the HRDIC, which I'm really glad about. Um, I want to make one little comment, which I'm thinking people may wonder about, but um, for the people that are like the high school students, um, the reason that they're largely associate members is because this is a town committee. You have to be 18 years old and live yes. in Whalen to be a full voting. So because I, I, I never want people to think that they're lesser than. In some way. Um, but the other thing, I'm wondering about two things. One, um, when you mentioned about the Whalen Warriors, mm -hmm. um, I wonder why you, you're thinking that you have to um, rely on state legislation for that. Because I will tell you that Ms. Mitsuguchi, now Dr. Mitsuguchi, the middle of a school year just decided and you know when I, I mean you know with a lot of our support many people's support that we were not going to have that you know tomahawk or whatever <laughs> I can't remember um, and and so I don't think that you need state legislation to decide we're not going to be warriors anymore and I'm wondering why you think that sure. that <laughs> you need that sure let me address that I guess I was thinking parochially in terms of I was thinking a little parochially in terms of the fact that we 
the HRDEIC has no authority over the schools, but absolutely 100% people in town can express their concerns to the schools about, about the names of our teams, for sure. That uh, local lobbying, yes. And my other question was, I was wondering, I, I noticed you mentioned that when they do the land acknowledgement that you're doing somewhere towards the, I mean, I have heard many land acknowledgements, including everything that our present governor did, the inauguration, the party, everything she did. The land acknowledgement was one of the first things. It, it, so we, I am w curious as to why it's coming later. So we actually have someone in the room who might be able to, might want to ask answer that question. Dennis Berry is in the back, our town moderator. Would you would you care to address Kim's question? I don't want to put you on the spot no. if you don't want to. <laughs> no, I'm here. It's okay. But you know, uh, of a lot of moderators, uh, we we don't go to a lot of meetings for exactly this reason. And I have a little side story I could tell you about a previous one I went to, and I don't mind. It's okay. No, feel free to no, 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 no. Um, I received a request to read the land acknowledgement statement uh, at the initial part of the, um, at the opening of the, uh, of the town meeting. And uh, first, I didn't know that you were a, you know, we, did, we went back and forth, exchanged about uh, your status as a town committee, you know, and so forth. Um, I have a rule that you can't put up literature, you can't put up anything else that doesn't pertain to a warrant article. I can't allow the town meeting to become a billboard for good things in town. So uh, I said, uh, tied it to a warrant article. And there isn't a warrant article. Then I said, wait a minute, uh, you're a town, are you a town board? You were a town board set up by the selectmen, or uh, only the selectmen and the town meeting can set up town boards. You are a town board. So you're going to be reporting, uh, well, and since you're a town board, you can report with other town boards and committees when they hear reports. So that, that's why it will be uh, with the uh, committee here reports. And one of the reasons I dropped by tonight, I would like to speak with you afterwards about how we're gonna do this exactly, a little bit of the choreography. Thank you. But um, no, it, you. it was, uh, uh, I at first, I do have a rule in order for anything to be said at a town meeting, it's got to pertain to an article on the warrant. Yes, and we, and we do hope, I don't know if this is working. Is this working? Is it projecting? We do hope that in the future, we will find a path forward to have it read at the beginning of the meeting. I mean, this is, this is a great first step. Thank you, f thank you for being put on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm entitled. Uh, one for, for what? Another four weeks from today? Another four weeks from today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, is there any other questions? This is really a detailed question. I'm just interested in your thoughts. It's such a, it's, 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 to me, it's a, a tough one. That I agree with the uh, school committee uh, changing the meeting that would have been held on Passover, and I understand that. Now, we, when we talk about town meeting, there was a lot of debate whether that should be held on a Sunday. Because uh, for a lot of people, that's also a, a day of observance. And yet, because of you know, the community, it was decided that was the best time for a lot of people. So you get into what's good for me might not fit your schedule. So I, 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 I don't think there's a right answer. I'm just curious on what your thoughts on how you deal with those issues where there, there's conflicting uh, needs. Yeah, I think it's complicated, and I think the important thing is to try hard not to cause harm to any particular community or group of people in town. And so, you know, if you accidentally schedule something on a holiday because you didn't know it was a holiday, then ideally you would say, oops, we made a mistake, and you would fix it. And hopefully people would, We actually we are working on putting together with the schools, they already have one, a cultural calendar that describes when all the, there are so many so holidays, many so many festivals, so many holidays. And so we are working to come up with a united calendar for the town and the schools so that everyone will know and we don't get taken by surprise by things that we didn't, you know, weren't aware of. Thanks for that question. Twentieth. Yeah. It just happens to be right in the middle of the New England Folk Festival, which is a uh, really a, a model of uh, equity uh, and inclusion. 
Uh, so it's it's going to be a conflict for us. That's a bummer, speaking of, of you know, conflicts. I mean, it's really hard to find dates. And, and there's also Wayland Arts, Arts is having a festival yeah, the same Arts weekend. Wayland is having a festival on May 20th at the Newstown Center. So I believe that's another conflict. But, you know, this is our learning stage. We, this is our first year, you know. Let's just roll with it for the first year. And we'll consider everything that went good and that didn't go right. So for the next uh, festival session. Um, there is another question on the chat. It says, you mentioned the school statement against racism, which clearly isn't being honored. How can you help them do a better job as a town resource? Like That's Karen mentioned, uh, and like we said, that we report to uh, Select Board for every single work we want to do in the town, we have to go through select board. And select board and school committees are two different entities in the town, we all know that. Um, and now how do we understand this? We were present in the school committee meetings throughout, and we also invited um, Chris Ryan and other people to collaborate, and they agreed, and they also were very forthcoming, and they, they were welcoming. But the point is, right now, there are elections going on. They, they, there is a lot of campaigning going on. So our work has taken a little bit of a backseat because of all the election stuff. But I'm sure that the collaboration is going to happen in the future as, uh, you know, as the school committee fills its uh, two seats. And um, yeah, I, we really want them to do a better job, don't we all? We're mothers, we're parents, we're, we're doing our best here um, as HRDIC, with school committee, our only comment is that at this point, we are trying our best with our statements. Uh, those statements, when you go onto our town page, you will see that there are po pointers and guidelines, well thought through pointers and guidelines, and they really make people think and introspect. And that's the beginning of uh, every discussion, you know, when people can ask themselves questions. And I think I also want to say that w we all, ha every one of us has a role. You know, you don't have to be on a board or a committee to have a role in, in creating a better town. And so if, if, if you, the people asking these questions, or people in the room, or people on Zoom, if you have ideas about how to make the schools better, by all means, bring them to the school committee and bring them to the, the, the school administrators. You know, we all can play a role. And there's another question. And Jessica has a oh. question. Jessica. Thank you. Uh, I thought it might be helpful if you could think off the top of your head of some of the items that were in our letter to the select board of the things that we suggested that they take a look at. For the schools? Yeah. Yeah. So I just happen to have here a copy of the letter. Um, <laughs> So we wrote two letters to the select board about the schools. One was about the investigation of the superintendent, Dr. Easy, which was back, this was back in November. And then the other one was about the horrible racist graffiti that was found in December. Do you want to take one of these? No, you want me? I'll, I'll take the racist graffiti. Okay. Uh, so the superintendent investigation, um, I'm not going to read the letter, obviously, but I'll just read. In the introduction, we said um, that our purpose in writing was not to talk about the specifics of the case, which we understand was under an active investigation, but instead to propose a set of questions that we hope will inspire reflection and creative thinking about how all parts of the Wayland community can work together toward the goal of creating a community of belonging. And we... Um, we listed a bunch of questions. We listed some questions to address conflict, questions to consider, questions to address when conflicts arise, and questions to foster forward movement to avoid these kinds of problems in the future. So a couple of bullets, just a few examples um, of, of questions to address conflicts when they arise. Um, uh, one question was, if there are policies and procedures for addressing complaints and conflicts, what would it take to evaluate those policies and procedures from a diversity, equity, and belonging perspective? If there are no such policies and procedures, what would it take to develop them? Um, we said, 
for conflicts that involve racial or other identity-based differences? What would it take to be sure that all channels of resolution are fully exhausted before elevating the conflict to the legal system? So those are just a couple of examples, um, and this letter can be found on the website. And if you want to talk about the graffiti letter. Yeah, when we were taking you through the presentation, you must have seen some of the bullet points where we spoke about DEI position in the town, um, you know, establishing uh, or initiating a town-wide equity audit. All of these actions were already recommended before the racial graffiti happened. So when it happened, we compiled our already recommended action plan, like diversifying the staff boards and committee, launched the reporting, incident reporting line. Um, if you want, want to um, learn more about it, um, the member who's working on it is right here in the meeting. Um, additional actions that were proposed were designate a civil rights officer, mandate the creation of a response plan, uh, provide mandatory training and make ongoing coaching available. So when we are speaking to speaking about equity audit and Department of Justice, as uh, Karen mentioned, Department of Justice is helping other towns as well in dealing with these things, with their programs, and Spirit Program is one of them. So our work is to make sure that we understand their processes and bring them in our town. If they need manpower, we'll try to get as many volunteers as possible and get them to educate our town. Not just town administration, but people in general, be your valent resident. So that's our uh, one of our um, uh, action plan. Um, appoint town representatives as non-voting <coughs> members of the HRDIC. This was also so that was like maybe asking if the police chief would become a member of the HRDIC or the school superintendent yeah. or his or her designee, that sort of thing. So this was, this was our statement. It's really very well written, very well thought through uh, statements. And if you, you'll find that on the town page. We also have a hard copy if somebody wants to take it home and learn more about it. We also have a proposed holiday display policy. And I wanted to just um, quickly tell you guys, there are guiding questions for select board to consider when they have a proposal coming to them to display any ho a holiday um, uh, you know, activity in a public space or a display. Could this display or activity be construed as a town endorsement of a specific religious tradition? So these are the questions you're asking themselves. They're asking, are you aware of cultural or religious meaning associated with the uh, display or uh, activity that might lead to feelings of harm or exclusion of, for people who are not part of that culture or religion? Are you aware of discriminatory or hateful use of any of the display symbols that can lead or could lead to harm? And uh, we had these legal questions as well uh, given in the um, holiday display policy. So we, we are actually working towards uh, refining it in the coming years, more ideas, more input from other people, but <coughs> definitely working together with other entities. And school committee has been our priority since past six months. All right, uh, could you say a little more uh, about, I, I think this will be the last question, can we? Could you say a little more about what the Valen Lived Experience Project will include? Well, it's already done. This is why our uh, HRDIC, one of the factors why our HRDIC came into existence. I'll let uh, Karen take over and tell you what that included and uh, some facts. Uh, yeah, and other towns have been doing these lived experiences surveys. So we took our ideas from Needham. And now since then, we've shared our ideas. So we, 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 with permission, we got a bunch of ideas from Needham. We did the lived experiences survey. Then we shared our ideas with now we have Winchester and Sudbury that we've shared our stuff. We've paid it forward. Um, so these lived experiences surveys are ways that communities try to get a handle on what's, what is life like on the ground for people who live here, and, and in particular, people who may be of a different race or ethnicity or religion. Um, or or uh, sexual orientation, whatever it might be. We so we had we did this a couple of years back. We had some 31 respondents. Um, the results I'm going to sound like a broken record, but the results are on our website, top left corner. Um, the there's a, a PowerPoint presentation with all of the results, and I I certainly can't quote them chapter and verse, but you can find them there. Um, and there were people people have experienced. Ex things here that nobody would feel proud of, you know? They, I mean, 
Things happen here just like they happen everywhere else. We are not immune from the forces that exist everywhere in the country. So. All right, I think we are done with the question. Anyone else? I think we are done. <laughs> um, Stan Robinson, by the way, is my name. Um, I'm wondering if um, you have encountered um, uh, th the issue of uh, discrimination of people who have low income. Uh, as you know, Wheeland has very few of them. Um, but that means they're more important. <laughs> uh, and uh, do you want to limit your scope to just uh, color and uh, sexual uh, identification and uh, 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 religion and uh, uh, national origin uh, and leave that question aside? No. I mean, the, all of the things you mentioned, including uh, socioeconomic status or whatever the proper term would be, are all included in our charter and our mission. It's all of it. I mean, remember what Yamini said? She said, we are based on the core principle that every human being has equal value and dignity, no matter who they are. And, and that goes for, for what you're asking about, too. That, that was an excellent question because um, about encountering uh, discrimination at that uh, um, you know low income level, uh, I would like to invite Mailing to say a few words because she is our force behind our um, reporting line. She's our committee member and uh, she's worked with other people in the committee, and we are bringing this incident reporting line so that we can tackle these complaints or these harassment issues, if they, at all they are in the... I'm sorry, the girls <laughs> uh, No problem. Like is this working? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, yes, so we hope to be starting uh, to launch the reporting line fairly soon, and there will be a forum available on the website, and we will also have a, a number, and you can call and leave a voicemail, and report, so if, if there's any experience, any type of discrimination or mistreatment, any concerns, any personal experiences, you can call and leave a message. And then we will have responders who work together in teams of two every month to respond to your calls. And so this can be, you know, if you experience discrimination because of low income status or, or really anything, even if you're not a Wayland resident, but you experience something in Wayland, then we are also concerned and we, we want to hear from you. Um, so you can choose to just call to talk to us um, if you're not sure what you want to do, what type of steps you want to take, and we can talk that through. We can act as a sort of liaison to the town representatives, whether it be the police, um, the schools, or the town manager, if you have questions. And also if you want to file a formal complaint then we can also uh, link you with resources and to the proper authorities who can take that complaint further and to help you resolve it. And you need to speak about the anonymous. Oh yes, there, there's also an um, option to report anonymously. Of course we cannot investigate, but, well we don't, we don't investigate, but we cannot pass. Um, so if there's anonymous complaint, then we will um, keep keep it with the rest of the data. We'll gather the data together. Um, Basically, we just want to get to the yes. end, on the responder end. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Hi, I put you on spot. So reporting line is very, very important, and it'll be launched soon. Um, we, Like we said, we collaborate not just with Select Board. We do it with police department. We do it with town manager. And since the, we have Town Manager Act, we are directly working with Town Manager. So this is, this is our end. Yeah? <laughs> uh, can I conclude? Oh, yes, but you know what? We have to um, move to adjourn, actually. Yeah. We have to vote S to adjourn. What? Yes, please. <laughs> Someone from... Uh,
Can you? Yeah, make I move that we adjourn this the HRDSC public meeting. Um, I second that. Mailing. Yes. Jessica. Yes. Has Heather? Heather there on the HP. No. Okay. okay. All right, so the meeting is adjourned. Uh, I just wanted to conclude that we spent the year both launching the committee and carrying out our duties. We learned a lot along the way. Building on our accomplishments and learnings, we laid the foundation for impactful activities and campaigns in the year ahead. We are grateful for the opportunity to collaborate with the select board and other town entities toward the goal of becoming an inclusive, welcoming community where everyone feels respected, heard, and treated no matter who they are, and now the mic is giving it. <laughs> and I should be, mic drop. <laughs> Thank you so much, people. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for taking Thank out you. your valuable time on a weekday.